Welcome to ResX. An indigenous lifestyle show for everyone. I'm Tyler Tatusis. And I'm Erin Goodpipe, and we are your co-hosts. So this week's topic is truth and reconciliation, and we have invited a number of guests to speak about the issue. So what is truth and reconciliation, and what does it truly mean? Mm -hmm. Like there's an older generation, mm -hmm. our generation, and a younger generation. Yeah. What does it mean to you, Erin? Oh man, it's such a loaded term nowadays. Um, I think I'll address the reconciliation part, but I think that's reconciling and going back to our humanity, right? So it's inviting, especially non-Indigenous people, um, to recognize um, those friendly relations back with their people, especially on this land. Mm -hmm. And then I think the truth part is really addressing. Um, we need to understand the history and those and teach those types of things um, to be able to even move forward with reconciliation. I totally agree. It has to come from like forgiveness, and it's it's mm -hmm. it's difficult. And challenging to forgive something yeah, that was so horrible and still to this day and a lot of the country and people in Canada don't even know the history. No kidding there's some mm -hmm. hard truth there to sort of uncover and I know for um, non-indigenous people there's a lot of guilt and shame that comes up mm -hmm. um, and that's really tough for both parties to try and work with so how do we partner in a good way? Right? Yeah yeah it's really it's really big and I know um, the 94 calls to action are some things that are a good guide for us to follow because they, they outline um, ways that we can go about this mm -hmm. um, that outline uh, child welfare, justice, education, the healthcare system, even the media. Even yeah, that's Rex, true. Right? Yeah. Is, a, is, is doing that job. There's some great minds out there speaking and sharing the knowledge mm -hmm. and the next step is what are we going to do after that, hey? Exactly, exactly. So with that, let's get started with this week's episode and hear what people have to say about truth and reconciliation. Let's do it. Traditional knowledge keeper Joseph Natauho recently stopped by Res X to share what truth and reconciliation means to him. Joseph My name is Joseph Natauho. I'm from uh, Sturgeon Lake First Nation, which is close to Prince Albert. Our traditional name for Sturgeon Lake is Paktaho Saigaikan, or Net Casting Lake. And uh, the topic I've uh, been asked to talk about, reconciliation, I can understand it better if I come at, come at it from my language, Nihiawiwin. That's what Miseikiwin. Miseikiwin, which is like mending, mending a fence. Bimatiwin, to restore life. Bhakti Tamwin, which is uh, the act of uh, letting go as a way of. Uh, you know, letting go of bringing things back into, I guess, into balance, into harmony. That's the only way I, I can understand it for myself because the uh, experience I went through was very difficult, you know. Um, so I'm reconciling the uh, fact that the government and the church has created this law and these policies to, you know, take children out of their families and put them into residential schools. So I'm a product of that and I all, but I don't want to be I don't want to remain a victim from that situation so I've had to but you know I've had to let go to a degree as much as I could to ask forgiveness you know for the people that created these laws and policies and uh, the most important thing is that I forgive myself for what has happened to me because there was uh, a lot of anger, a lot of pain, a lot of near-death experience that I went through. And, uh, you know, when one goes through those difficult emotions, you blame the perpetrator, which, of course, is the government of Canada, you know, and the uh, church states and the Anglican Church of, you know, the Church of England. So that's, that's what I'm talking about, you know, and reconciling is not an easy thing for me still, uh, to a degree, I have forgiven the government and the church. I understand that, you know. But most importantly, I've forgiven myself for what I've experienced, the sexual abuse, the physical abuse, the mental and emotional abuse, even the spiritual abuse. All these abuses I had to heal through, through that which I was taught, that language of English and the culture, the Canadian culture, I had to find my way through that culture to heal all the things that were uh, happening to me that I was experiencing. So, and so far, so good, you know. I'm lucky to be alive, I'm thankful to be here, 
And uh, that's about all I want to say about reconciliation. Dr. Shawnee Pete stopped by ResX, and we wanted to ask her about reconciliation and how she is implementing reconciliation at the University of Regina. My name is Dr. Shawnee Pete, and I'm from Little Pine First Nation, and I'm an associate professor in the Faculty of Education at the University of Regina. Reconciliation is Canada's greatest challenge. Uh, it requires settlers and new Canadians to begin to understand the complex and racialized history that founded this country. Without an understanding of those histories, reconciliation, I believe, can never be achieved. I expect um, settlers and others to be able to take up this work and to begin to understand um, a more accurate telling of Can Canada's history, one that also speaks to the racism, oppression and superiority that was a product of um, the colonial system. I'm in the Faculty of Education and I'm really, really pleased by the way in which our students and my colleagues have taken up the calls to action. We have a You Are Stars group, they're a group of anti-racism students and teachers who are working together to better understand the effects of racism in society. Last year, the Stars group took upon themselves to read all of the calls to action allowed. Because in the words of one of my students, the least that we can do as white people is to read it. Additionally, the calls to action have been a required component of a course that's been taught by Mike Capello. Mike, like myself, is very much uh, determined to ensure that what we teach at the university allows our students to gain a better understanding of our colonial past. Without that, we feel that they'll be ill-prepared to serve as teachers in an increasingly diverse society. The program that he taught, uh, the students actually were required to read the formal documents of the TRC, the final report. They took up a discussion of, that, uh, of those readings in their class and they began to consider what that meant for curriculum practices in their own teaching work that they'll be doing. Another colleague um, in the fine arts department invited me to join her fine arts students on a tour to the residential school in Labret. In that setting, we shared lunch together and I shared with them the history of the residential school system, the history of the Coppell Indian Residential School, and we walked the grounds together. Many new questions emerged for those learners. They wondered what it would feel like as a parent to have your children taken from you under threat of uh, jail time. They wondered what it would be like to be a child in a setting like that, to be denied the opportunity to live with your parents. In that setting, our students learned to be both empathetic and compassionate but it also gained for them, they gained um, an, a better understanding of the residential school experience and it offered them their story. Many of our students are white, middle class and female and many of them have been structurally denied the opportunity to learn about Aboriginal people in the past. These first-hand experiences in Mike's class and in the fine arts class offer them an opportunity to frame a story for themselves as settlers. While they often turn to myself and my other Indigenous colleagues and they were learning to respect and understand the stories that we share, their story starts really differently. For them, when they're teaching, they'll be able to reflect back on when I read the TRC final report, when I visited the Librette Indian Residential School. In this way, they begin to write into, the, into their own role uh, responsibilities for teaching this content because once they know the history, they can't unknow it. And so they take on the responsibility to teach in a di very different way than they were taught. That for me gives me a really strong sense of hope that reconciliation is a possibility in this next generation. Reconciliation, I believe, has to be undertaken in a comprehensive way, not only by educators, but all people in every single field. 
Certainly there's been discussions in media of the need to decolonize their practices and we've seen evidence that the police services and social workers and many others are also taking up this work. One of the, uh, the really good ways to begin to take this work up is using the tool from Kairos, the blanket exercise. It demonstrates 150 years of oppression in Canada, and it, it, it literally begins with blankets on the floor, representative of the lands that were originally occupied by Indigenous peoples. And over time, you see a systemic um, playing through of the oppression, the taking away of land through treaties, uh, the implementation of the Indian Act, the requirement to go um, to residential schools. It looks at the implications of the child welfare system and on and on. This exercise really opens the eyes of um, participants who often are learning for the very first time this part of our history. Um, many of our, the people that we're interacting with in their K-12 experiences and often even into university never had the opportunity to learn of these things before. So engaging with this activity is often the very first time that they get to take a look at the truth of our past and they begin to speak to how it feels for them to have learned it for the first time. And with that, let's take a break and hear some messages from our sponsor, the Saskatchewan Indian Gaming Authority. My name is Kelly Asuka and I go to school at Saskatchewan Indian Institute of Technologies. I'm from Thunderchild First Nation. The SEGA scholarship for me brought a lot of value. Just got inspired and motivated and that's what the scholarship really did, was inspire me. They're investing in, in people, and I think SIGA truly helps communities in Saskatchewan. Access 7 Sports, bringing sports to you. For all of your local sports, tune to Access 7. Visit myaccess.ca slash access7 for full schedule details. Welcome back. Filmmaker Trudy Stewart recently screened her documentary from up north featuring elder Noel Star Blanket. So we're gonna view that clip and see what Trudy has to say about it. From 2012 to 2015, I worked at the Truth and Reconciliation Commission recording survivor statements. I would record hundreds of stories from survivors about their experience at Indian Residential School. They knew where we... Nothing would prepare me for the many horror stories I would hear about abuse. I also found inspiration in the survivors and their stories of healing and resiliency. Being disconnected from my home, my family, and my community made it very difficult. Whenever anybody would ask me where I was from, I would just say, Tonight was a community screening of uh, my short documentary From Up North that featured Noel Star Blanket as the storyteller. So again, on behalf of the university, thank you to live speaker Noel Star Blanket and to, and to Trudy Stewart for sharing From Up North with us this evening. Please help me now welcome Trudy Stewart to the stage. My film is about my experience working at the Truth and Reconciliation Commission and what I learned from there and how it affected me. And uh, Noel Starblanket was kind enough to share his experience about uh, going to Labrette Indian Residential School. I would record hundreds of stories from survivors about their experience at Indian Residential School. They, they knew where we... Nothing would prepare me for the many horror stories I would hear about abuse. I also found inspiration in the survivors and their stories of healing and resiliency. It's important for me, even as painful and as difficult as it has been, to educate people about these, uh, these atrocities. And so uh, uh, education is paramount in my mind. 
for uh, for non-indigenous students, for non-indigenous teachers, for everybody that uh, they have to learn about this because we have to move away from that legacy and that's what uh, Truth and Reconciliation Commission talks about. Reconciliation means moving away from that. It's it, not to be forgotten, uh, but it is to be forgiven and people have to work on that process and it's uh, time consuming, it's very difficult. Uh, it has not been easy for me, but I, I do it because uh, people ask me and I feel it's important that uh, they need to hear, they need to know what happened. There can be challenges when you're dealing with such sensitive material, uh, but luckily, my work with the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, I learned how to uh, approach those topics and uh, the storytellers in a way that puts them in control of their own story because that's something that uh, residential school survivors never really had. But ultimately, what happens when you become educated about this subject, about this issue, then it, it falls on you. If you do nothing about it or say nothing about it, that's up to you. You're, that's, you have to be accountable to yourself. I can't force you to do that. I can't force you to reconcile. So the reconciliation has to be on you when you see things like this and when you hear people talking about those things. So I really hope that people uh, have an understanding about how even though um, somebody may not have gone to residential school, um, they can still be affected quite deeply as an intergenerational survivor and how those things are still permeating culture today. Don't go anywhere, we have more ResX coming right up. Access 7, bringing Saskatchewan to you. details, visit myaccess.ca slash watch local. SIGA contributes to community development corporations, which in turn invest in local communities. We had to put in new digital mammography equipment. It detects some cancers earlier. We doubled the capacity of the dialysis program. SIGA helps us to change lives. I used to drive to Regina three times a week, and now I get to stay with my family, and it's changed my life for the better. Cowboy Smith is a playwright, actor, and filmmaker on the series Red Talks, talking about reconciliation. So let's find out what reconciliation means to him. Okay. It's, uh, it's an important thing to call to the ancestors and tell them who's speaking. Otherwise, they don't know who the hell Cowboy Smith is. My Blackfoot name, my ancestral name is Wounded Mouth, the name of one of my ancestors who made similar sacrifices to our ancestors we lost uh, during the residential school era and, and the abuses that happened in that time. Wounded Mouth was uh, a warrior. He was shot in the face with, uh, with a musket, I guess it would have been at the time, and a part of his jaw was blown off. And he chose not to doctor this wound. He chose to leave it um, as, a, as, a very, as a very gnarly looking scar for the rest of the young uh, people in the camp. Uh, as an indicator that no matter what happens, no matter how hard it gets, you have to continue fighting, you have to continue pushing forward. So when my grandfather Sugutsumi gave this name to me, um, I didn't know what it meant. I was like, wounded mouth, hmm. It's kind of hoping for a cooler name. 
but um, but as you know, as as time went on, I, I developed a relationship with with this name and the and the stories that came with this name. And you know, as I'm connecting deeper to my own culture, I'm finding more and more connections and connotations and. And, and, and really, I mean, going beyond sentimentality and finding a true sentiment and a connection that I can't find anywhere else. You know, I am, I am an artist, I perform, I make movies, I do all kinds of cool stuff, cool stuff, but nothing compares to the connection I get from, from my Natsitipi culture, my Blackfoot culture, the Siksidei Tsitipi. We are here in Kitoks in our traditional territory. So, you know, I, I want to kind of kick things off with Truth, of course, our theme for this Red Talks program is truth, reconciliation, and the future. So let's start with the truth. And the truth is, I love you all for, for being here tonight. I mean, I really, you're kind of taking a risk. You're like, I know what TED Talks is, but what the hell is Red Talks? <laughs> so I'm, you know, I'm here to share a little bit about what we're doing with this program, you know. Uh, this is the Red Talk about Red Talks. I've been telling everybody, this is the Red Talk about Red Talks. <laughs> kind of get it all out of the way, get it all out on the plate. So, you know, starting with truth, I want to also acknowledge that, you know, everything that I do that people like, it's kind of cool or whatever, whether it's uh, performing or movie making or curating or whatever, telling a bad joke, whatever it may be. Um, I've been designed by the grandmothers in our community. I've been designed by, uh, the matriarchs in our communities. I've been very fortunate to have a close relationship with my grandmother, Marianne Smith, uh, formerly Marianne Creighton Divine. And, uh, you know, I had an opportunity to spend 15 years with this individual. And uh, she worked as a, um, she was a, uh, a detox worker. So she helped with people recovering from all types of nasty addictions. And I didn't know, I didn't know anything about residential school. I didn't learn about any of these things in my secondary education. So I, she was my first point of contact for humanitarianism. She was really quite a, um, an influence. But as we, as we move forward into conversations about reconciliation and, and the future and, and our shared space in, in traditional indigenous territories, I think it's important for all of us to understand and be aware that the frequencies of the land can only be translated by the people of the land. The indigenous people of the land have been translating these frequencies for thousands of years. I was fortunate enough. Reconciliation, my modalities of reconciliation come in the reality that we, uh, we don't really know what's going on. We need to hear from our elders. We need to hear from people who are um, you know, professionals in their relative fields. That's why we curate these programs to bring different perspectives on complicated discourse. RED, okay, R-E-D, it is definitely, without a doubt, an acronym, just to sort of ease the minds of uh, the academics who may doubt what we're doing or, or, or overanalyze uh, over what we're doing. And this doesn't fit in my framework. This doesn't fit in my pedagogy. How do I cite this thing? <laughs> is, is this MLA, APA? I don't know. But I will say that RED is an acronym for R is the, uh, it's about resilience for us. These are stories of resilience. We want to uh, create moments of empowerment. That's our E. And of course, the discourse, just to make the academics happy, we threw that word in there. <laughs> and the X, silent but deadly, much like my last name. I have a silent X in my name, and that is, uh, that is a recognition of the treaties we signed. X is on the treaty. It is the unknown in mathematics. There's a lot I don't know about my culture. Um, it, is a, it is an acknowledgment of the four directions. And the knowledge bundle we are creating together. Um, everybody who comes to the Red Talk stage is, is adding a new element to this, this worldwide knowledge bundle. And any one of you here tonight could eventually be on the stage. The stage is for everybody. Uh, you know, it's not about indigenous or, you know, all of the imagery that we, we, we hear about. We hear about, you know, the red skins. And I mean, but, but, but I mean, there's so many positive connotations to, to that classic image, image system or imagery or, or even stereotype, we decided that we we're going to take on uh, all of these um, modalities and touch points of conversation because we want to be disruptive. We don't want to ask permission. We want to put on shows at places like the Taylor Institute for Teaching and Learning. We want to go out on the land. We want to go to other countries. We want to be led by the indigenous people of those territories. 
so, taking it um, to new territories. So if you, this is a call to action for everybody, for every indigenous person in the world. If you can hear me out there, wherever you are, give us a call, shoot us a name, email, give us a Facebook poke, whatever it's gonna take. We want to hear your voice. We want to hear your stories. So with that, one more time, Kitsikakamam, I love you all. Sukhapi. So, Tyler, another awesome, great episode, very educational, mm -hmm. lots of great discussion. What did you think? Really, it, it hits me emotionally. I feel anger and a little bit of sadness because that information is not getting out there to the people mm -hmm. on both sides of the wall. Mm, mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah, for me, I just like I keep getting caught up of, of um, you know, reconciliation being this, this buzz term and lots of non-Indigenous people sort of using it as a tokenism, right? Mm -hmm. Another Indigenous tokenism, but it's like, what are they actually doing? And so now after this huge, um, you know, the commission that went through for many years, it's like now we have 94 practical applications practical applications so it's like how you can actually apply these concepts and start to rec reconcile and rectify the broken relationship and the promises so it's like there's no more excuses anymore so I know I get a little bit frustrated with it, it, it's that. easy to get frustrated because we've been putting up with this for a long time and it's mm -hmm. our history and it's gonna stick with us for a long time yeah for sure and I just think it it's like it's common sense sometimes because it's mm -hmm. like how do we just love people and how do we you know treat people like human beings right and it's like it's not not just um, these this tr truth and reconciliation indigenous things aren't just you know saving culture and language but it's deeper than that because they have impacts on the lives of indigenous people you're so right so it's not just something you know that it's just in a book and mm -hmm. apply so yeah I get pretty passionate about it too yeah, yeah. and it, it really impacts us and, and just not on that level but also on the emotional level mm -hmm. what can we do for our people emotionally to help us get past this yeah for sure I'm really interested to see how they're going to apply like we come from education mm -hmm. type of background so I know for me I want to see like how is the curriculum gonna be changed how are we gonna start doing land-based education how are we gonna start right. to bring indigenous people into the schools and transforming that atmosphere right and I really like that yeah. idea like getting students involved and getting them to go out into different communities non-indigenous communities yeah, and teaching sure. this too yeah and like, it's yeah this is like truth and reconciliation isn't just for indigenous people mm -hmm. it's for all people right? that's so, true yeah mm -hmm. so with that guys um, we had an awesome episode. We'd like to thank our sponsors, the Saskatchewan Indian Gaming Authority. Make sure you check out our hashtag ResX and tell us what you thought of this week's episode. Thank yeah. you and have a good day.